uh, you know, my parents uh, uh, thought that, that chemistry is not like a profession where you can actually make any kind of money or survive, which is actually not true. You can do quite well <laughs> as a chemist. And so they wanted me to become a, uh, a dentist or a, or a, um, um, a med, you know, a medical professional of some kind. And uh, so I went to Berkeley and, and I actually was a biochemistry major oh. for a semester. And, and I took the biochemistry class and I just didn't really like it. I actually love biochemistry now, and a lot of my research is actually biological research, but I did not like what was being done back then, which is memorizing huge schemes of reaction cycles and, and things like that. And so I actually just uh, can't, left the class halfway through the semester and, and jumped into a physics class instead and just did that. And okay, so I did it pretty quickly. And of course, there was in my case some parental pressure, which was the reason why in the first place I wasn't doing the thing mm. uh, that I thought might be the best you know, th thing for me to do. And so I switched majors actually twice because I switched from biochemistry into chemistry and they had two chemistry majors, kind of like here. We actually have an LAS and a sort of professional Engine, yeah. you know, chemistry major. So I switched into that LAS one first and then I switched into the... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the whatever professional major because by then it was you know, again I was back on my course of I'm going to grad school and, and doing research um, so it's never too late you know uh, to, to change I mean people sometimes change much later people graduate from college and then do stuff for a while and realize that that's not really like what they really want to do and then maybe even go back to school again or, or just change you know, professions of course it becomes harder at some point <coughs> if you're employed in industry and you're making a nice salary, and perhaps you even have a young family at that point, it's much harder to go at, oh, I'm gonna to go to grad school, <laughs> and back to that minuscule grad school salary again, but, but uh, so. Do you think the way you were taught played a role in why you didn't like biochemistry? No, no, not, I had actually no, ex I thought even like, hey, this sounds pretty interesting, let's try it out, right? And, but I really did not like the way that that class was taught. I yeah, don't exactly. think they teach biochemistry, by the way, that way anymore. But this, is, this was like in 1982. But this was a purely memorization class. And, uh, uh, and by the way, nothing against that either. I mean, again, uh, my strength is not in that. Right? My strength is, I, I can, you can give me an equation like the Schrodinger equation, and I can sit down and derive the Gibbs free energy relationship from that on the, with my pencil and paper, right? Because I can sort of follow through the logic. Um, other people are really good actually at remembering very large numbers of connected facts. And it's not the facts that are important, it's actually those interconnections. Connections. And then having a picture out of that, that's not like equations, but it is actually a sort of fairly well logically built up picture. But to do that, you do have to have that ability to store also these facts that mm. are then interconnected. And I find that actually a lot of scientists uh, and, and uh, fall into the kind of the, you know, you can sort of say some are more on the interconnect the facts and come up with schemata that way. And some are more like go through equations and explain things by yeah. sort of connecting things uh, that way. And I simply found that I was more of the second kind and that biochemistry class was totally geared towards the first kind. And so it was really just not uh, for me. So do you think the, the, the only reliable metric is your own intuition or like your yeah, own, in the like end you have feeling? to experience it to know it well when I t as I said when I took this class I thought like why not you know uh, we'll see you know maybe I'll do that mm -hmm. you know after all and and but I took it and it really just was not to my liking and I, I, I got out of the class and took something else instead and, and you know my parents eventually forgave me <laughs> for becoming a chemist I think they eventually actually realized no actually it's not that bad there's jobs out there and, you know the life of a university professor is not so bad mm -hmm. you know all of that Oh, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What were the setbacks that you faced just because of that dissonance? Well, I mean, so there are, of course, you know, setbacks that you encounter, you know, because of things like this. I mean, in the case of my parents, we didn't talk mm. for years, right? And it was, that wasn't easy. And, you know, your parents are people that you usually you know, are, you know, pretty close to. And, uh, and so that took a few years uh, until they saw that like, okay, he did graduate, he got a PhD, he's getting you know, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a good employment. And uh, so you, know, you have to work through times like that, and mm -hmm. especially when it's something that's related to your family, then it's hard. You know. It's already bad enough if you lose a friend over something, but it's even worse if you're like, you know, not talking to your parents over something. But you know, we all have networks of people that tell you like, no, no, what you're doing is, <laughs> is okay. And certainly, <clears throat> my siblings were like, "Yeah, you're good with, with what you're doing." Uh, 
yeah, my parents did like the idea of my brother doing computer science. That was sort of like, yeah, we can understand how you get employed with that. Uh, they didn't like my sister's uh, thing either. She, she actually became a biologist. And so. And that wasn't really you know, to their liking either. But eventually we all, you know, I think we reconciled and I think they, they understood that you know, these choices weren't that bad actually that the, the kids made. Uh, so it was a few years of rough going in the family, but eventually settled down. I guess the important part is that you didn't lose that confidence in yourself. And you yeah, and, and you might. Right? I mean, you know, there is certainly something about peer pressure and parental peer exactly. pressure is worse probably yeah. than than uh, most peer pressure. But I think a lot of us experience that because, mm. you know, our parents have ideas about what they would we should their, be yeah. and what we want, uh, what they want us to do. And often those ideas don't go far away from the, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree kind mm. of ideas. Uh, but you want to do something different. And, uh, you know, in the end, you have to listen to yourself. I mean, for me, it was just so clear that mm. this was stuff that I don't like to study that much. And this is stuff that I really do like to mm. study or the way it wasn't even, as I said, it's not even this is the stuff that I like to study. I do biophysics now and bio, you know, I do this uh, for a living. But it, it was the way that it, I would have to study. I just didn't like that. And so I did something different. Um, so, yeah, I, I think in the end, you have to give yourself the benefit of the doubt that if you really feel you like something and you really feel you don't like something else, even if there are some people in your life, even important ones that like disagree, you do the thing that you think you like to do. I think that's that's very important. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's 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 like you, you, you would rather have the fight with your parents early on than let's say that you ended up becoming a biochemist yeah. and then you become a dentist and then you ended up hating your life. Yeah, exactly. And like never talking to them ever right. again. And, and look, my problem was a pretty small one. I mean, I, yeah. had, <laughs> I, had, I had friends in late middle school, like in ninth grade or 10th grade, they really were not interested in the science classes and they weren't interested in, in you know, the math class or any of these other things. But they were jamming in a band and that's what they wanted to do, right? And so this is, a, you know, then the problem arises even when you're like a teenager and you're 60 years old, not, not you know, by the time you go to college. And, uh, but it was very clear that they were not going to be happy going to a university and sitting in classes and learning that kind of stuff. They wanted to make music and, uh, and they did. <laughs> and again, it was the same situation. Uh, some of these I followed up with and I knew them years later. And, and it, the same thing happened, right? I mean, their parents eventually settled into the idea that, well, you know, they seem to be able to survive. They're a musician. Why not? <laughs> uh, it just took them a while to come around you know, to, that, to that idea. So, uh, so sometimes it could happen earlier, sometimes it can happen later. Um, but I think you do have to listen, you know, especially if it's, you know, if it's something where you're like, well, I'm not sure one way or the other. Well, then maybe take the advice. Right? If somebody mm -hmm. says, even your parent, like, maybe try this, you know, do it. And, uh, but if you can pretty definitely feel like I like this and I don't like this as much, then you really do need to listen to that and, and do what you like.